Uh, Herman, I'm uh, super excited to welcome you on the podcast because uh, you've been in this personal branding space for so long. I mean, you've been on the internet, you know, before even Google was a thing, you know, before Google was on the internet. Uh, you've been working with uh, so many different companies, different startups in the blockchain space. And I guess your personal brand also helped in this sense, right? So this is what we are going to talk about. And also because you are teaching this subject on a university. So who else to, to ask about uh, personal branding, if not you, right? Thank you so much for having me, Miguel. <laughs> awesome. So just to uh, kind of kick it off with... Um, an example, right? Like there are CTOs and IT managers, uh, sometimes a VP of engineering who are joining uh, um, our community or they are potentially looking for a new job. And uh, I've noticed as the uh, headhunter that often they are not ready. You know, they have been working on their hard skills. They have really strong um, leadership skills. They are really good with technologies, but their personal brand is not really communicating this so based on your experience like how can someone tackle this how to even think about personal brand is it something just for marketeers or is it something that kind of everyone should be concerned about well that's 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 a that's an excellent question to start with um first of all and this is quite important for everyone to to realize every one of your viewers is already a brand every one of us is a brand so the question is not whether you are a brand or whether you are not. And I'll demonstrate it to you with a very simple example. Um, the question is whether you are conscious about it and whether you decide to strategically and with a specific target, maximize the, the value and the impact that you do with it. <laughs> um, but everyone is a brand. Um, Jeff Bezos, very smart gentleman, said that the brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room, right? And that is exactly, that's exactly the fact. Now, eventually after watching this podcast, your viewers will leave. And if they have seen you for the first time and eventually most likely me for the first time, they will leave with an impression. So I will have left your podcast i.e. the room, in this case, the virtual one, but the, I will eventually have left an impression, a good one, a bad one. What will they remember? And this happens through conversation all over. Whenever you meet a person and they leave, they leave an impression. Is it a strong impression? Is it a good impression? What is the meaning or the content of that impression? What are you associated, if you remember that person, with? That is a brand, right? And obviously, the more exposure you get to a brand, the better that impression and the, the rounder and more solid it gets. But every single one of us is a brand. Now, in the digital age, the way you manage your brand is different. Because if you're just focusing on having a CV and pushing it out there when there are opportunities, you will be missing most. If you, rather than that, realize that you are a brand and you actually work on your visibility, your presence, and, and becoming active, then you are increasing your chances by, a, by plenty of factors. Mm. That's the key. Mm. That's, that's a very interesting. I mean, it probably blends with uh, something like charisma, if I'm reading between the lines. So the charisma is what people perceive, probably, right? And the personal brand is something that you can also build when... You don't meet people face to face, like online, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, I am um, absolutely, and the actually the, the online space allows you to create a significantly broader reach and visibility without having to be in the room, right? Um, the obviously the depth of an impression you might generate when you meet someone in person is different, but it gives you such a great platform to reach visibility with your with, with your presence with your profile. Right, right now, as we speak, somebody might be checking you out and inviting you to connect. And eventually, a new business opportunity might stem out of it. And you and I are just here talking, right? So your brand is working for you right mm -hmm. now or not, depending on how, how good of a job you did there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what's shifting. And that's where, the, you know, that's where a great deal of power can come from. Awesome. And what, what should uh, these uh, CTOs and IT managers do to build their personal brand? Because often they are um, probably introverted, probably they don't want to kind of put themselves uh, too much online. Maybe they are not really um, 
into taking selfies of uh, drinking coffee or walking outside, right? So how to even think about the personal brand in a professional space? Yes, absolutely. Um, definitely, and thank God, not everybody needs to become a, 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 an influencer or you know a public face or create videos or, or no, no, um, definitely not. Uh, the key is first of all to identify, determine what it is that you want to stand for. Um, uh, particularly in the past, you presented yourself with your title. You know, you're the head of IT of right, but that. In the context of you being in the room, can can say a lot of things. But if your if your brand is online and you just say you know you're the IT director and it says nothing about it, I don't know what skills, what particular projects, what accomplishments you have. What you know, give me more. Right? Let let me learn more about you as I you know as it helps me shape your brand further. Um, and don't, you know, I, I always say um, that particularly in today's age. Um, people are looking for uh, specific areas, specific skills, but they're looking for contributions and for authentic impressions of human beings. <laughs> so uh, rather than saying that you're an IT director, I'd like to hear that you are someone who um, tries to explore the limits of what IT can do to change and deliver a better experience for customers. Well, that is something that I find intriguing, interesting. right? So it's not your title. It's how you are contributing value to the world. Right. Um, and that's the first thing that you might want to define. You're not defined through your title, but, you know, what is your contribution? How do you help companies or teams? What's your mission? Right. And let it be something more than just a bunch of very hard skills like, you know, you're, you're an IT architecture and cybersecurity expert. Great. Right. But you protect companies integrity. Right in today's challenging digital age. Oh, thank you. <laughs> just, thank you. <laughs> just, that sounds much better to me. Think of that. Start there, right? And, and then build your brand and your core around all of it in your presence and be visible. You know, create your profile. Enrich it. It's, it's free, right? You put mm -hmm. some effort into it. We put effort into looking good, right? It took me three hours to look the way I look right now, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> No, we put effort into looking good. We spend money on clothes and so on. And then on our presence online, you know, we oftentimes you know, let it aside. So all your CDOs, all your all your IT people, they are contributing outstanding values to companies. But oftentimes in you know in complex environments, you know, th let them think about how they contribute value. Think about how they contribute value. Make sure that they are visible and present. And then you know they, they can be. Uh, open for all sorts of different opportunities. That's where they start. There is more to it, but that's the mm -hmm. best place to start. Um, turn yourself into a, an interesting brand promise and mm -hmm. forget your titles. Yeah, yeah. interesting uh, how you also mentioned the outlook, which uh, for a lot of CTOs, especially in smaller companies, it could mean wearing a black T-shirt with a company logo, right? And they may be used to wearing this every day because everyone, you know, all the engineers wear this. But they uh, may be also looking for a next uh, job, you know, in a bigger company, a more corporate setup. So would you say that um, the and as a, as a result, of course, the black T-shirt would probably not communicate the expertise and, you know, it would not look as professional in the corporate setup. So now, would you suggest that someone is kind of positioning for the next job with um, a more suitable outfit like is this also something that plays a role wow quite an interesting uh, very interesting question um i i would i would send i would say that it, it depends quite a lot on uh, the type of job in the industry that you might be looking at there is indeed or let's say i might it might be in the banking um or in a more traditional industry uh where uh, they were actually directors usually will be dressing in a particular code or, you know, um, if that is your goal, right, if that's the industry in which you are, and that's a, then you're absolutely right. It's, it's, it's essential and important to network up, right, mm -hmm. and to dress up and to talk up in terms of topics for the job that you are aiming for, 100%. Um, your brand has an aspiration, 
in a positioning. That's how it starts. And then you need to build it into it. And you do that through communicating. And through that communication needs to be around topics that are relevant for the market you want it to have exposure to. Right. Mm. So uh, if you're if you're aspiring to a leadership position in IT, then all your technical knowledge of whatever you know, what uh, architecture or programming language uh, and so on, then forums that you might have been into, I'm not saying drop them, right? But it's not part of the dialogue that, or the, you know, the value that you are um, supposed to be creating out there. Now, at the same time, I said, depending on the industry, because, you know, um, and one of the markets that I have a lot of exposure to is a blockchain and Web3. Um, and in the and we we connect a lot with the world of banking. That's where you see the massive contrast, where you will see the you know the CEO of a multi multi billion dollar exchange wearing a T-shirt, meeting the head of BlackRock wearing a tailor made suit that costs twenty thousand dollars, <laughs> right? So it, it, the, that contrast depends on the industry a bit also. So if you're in a, a I don't know if Google might be a next step for one of your uh, um, viewers or, or listeners. Um, I, I see people at Google at relatively high levels wearing a t-shirt and a hoodie, and it's kind of okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so yes, yes, it's essential, but it depends, you know, the specific answer uh, is tied very closely to the industry and the objective and the job that you're targeting. Mm -hmm. It's interesting uh, how uh, strategic this uh, personal branding uh, is at the end, right? It doesn't, you know, usually people just create an account on LinkedIn and they start posting without really thinking about how they want to be perceived, what is their ideal target job. So so it's interesting how this overlaps with uh, marketing at the end, right? So, uh, and you've, you've been working on this also. Uh, so uh, before we started, you mentioned that this is probably the only thing uh, that marketing um, kind of brought to the world, or maybe I paraphrase it uh, incorrectly, but uh, maybe, you know, feel free to to correct me. Sure, sure. No, no, actually, you, you said it right. Um, branding, um, uh, br the, the contribution of branding, I believe, is the most impactful contribution that marketing can have on any given company or project or, or object. Um, and it's quite simple. Uh, see, uh, brand, for two, two key factors to prove that. First, um, all studies demonstrate that depending on the industry, the category and a series of different factors, that's why the range is so broad, the impact of branding on the price can be anywhere from 10, 20 up to 80% of the value. So in other words, if you are a brand, while selling the exact same product, you can ask for more money, right? Now, if you think of a supermarket where you have 10 different shampoos, the brand that is well known and positioned in a particular way can charge more money. And it's the same content. It does the same job if you think about it, mm -hmm. right? And it happens the same with candidates. If you have 300 candidates for a job, the one that can be, you know, either get the job because they they are perceived as a higher value for money. If you have a particular, I'm not saying you, you can ask for more money, but actually, depending on the position, it will indeed allow you to negotiate a higher salary. And it's not because you're impressing and you have followers. It's not about that, right? It's because you really have a commanding presence through a powerful brand and people can see the value you create, you're just more convincing, right? And that's, that's, that's the contribution of marketing and branding to a business. It allows you to charge more money. Um, and secondly, this is brand equity. Uh, it's the only thing that you can end up putting in a PL. But that is particularly relevant for companies looking for an exit and less applicable to the, to the um, aspect of personal branding. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, th so that's that's the key there. It adding value to you, and it is super strategic. It is marketing uh, is uh, actually you know it's it's uh, applying. Uh, you, people think of marketing; they think it's creativity, right? What you do is you apply creative ways to tell stories, but they need to be anchored on particular needs. 
and they need to follow goals and they need to apply to channels. So there is a system and a method to this. And I, you know, the reason why I believe um, a, a personal branding um, is, is, uh, is, or the, the reason why what I always advertise is to, to make it something strategic and to not go about it lightly. Um, and I've actually developed a particular methodology to do that, um, that I put forward in my online courses. And that's exactly, the, that's, those are the steps. You first define your brand, what you stand for. Then you define your brand strategy, right? That consists on what channels do you want to use? What content and topics do you want to talk about? What style and personality do you want to bring into it? What expertise will you bring into it? Um, what type of interaction and engagement, what network will you be trying to, to bring into and connect with, right? So strategic, you know? so who's your target? What are you talking about? What are you, with? and defining your goals. Are you trying to get a new job? Are you trying to demonstrate expertise? Are you trying to solidify relationships, right? Um, because personal branding is not only relevant, it's very relevant, but not only relevant for the next job, it's relevant for the next, the next, the next job, right? It might start with a sprint if you're looking for a job right now, but it's a marathon if you think about it in the long term, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it is very strategic, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Interesting example, as I mentioned, with the soap or, or shampoo, because I was just uh, in a shop the other day and there were like one next to the other. And I was kind of thinking, well, inside they are probably all very similar, but it's the brand that uh, got me to get the more expensive one at the end. So. Uh, probably something similar goes uh, in hands of hiring managers, uh, not hands, but heads of hiring managers. And uh, also candidates are looking um, at ways how to um, increase their salaries at the end. So so what are some practical ways and tips that um, people can do in order to be able to ask more salary? Yeah. Well, um, first of all, um, in terms of your online presence, it is important that it's remarkable whether you want to use it as a first contact or whether it's reassuring. But it's demonstrated. You know, think, think about it for a second. Not, not one single person in the world will ever hire you without having had a look at your LinkedIn profile. Can you agree with me? It doesn't mean that they might not hire you depending on what they see there, even if it's not really that cool. But what you want is that to be a, ah, oh, yeah. You know, even either either it can be the first point of contact, and you want that to be impressive. You want it to be like, "Wow, I, I need to talk to this guy." If you say, "IT director, open to work," okay, no, you know, I'm helping companies discover new ways. Of, you know what I was telling you earlier? Give me something inspirational. Let me land on your profile through accident as the first point of contact, or almost maybe I'm already about to hire you, but I'm, I'm gonna be curious. I'll check it out and I want this to be a damn, right? So that's very, very important and a very good place to start to make sure that your value is perceived everywhere, right? Um, and then for the rest, it is not something you can create right away. It's the long-term perception of it. What will happen is if you start investing in your brand, and by, I say time, right? You start putting out articles and contributing to the dialogue, being visible, creating value, right? Um, not talking about yourselves, talk about topics that are interesting to people, right? That makes you interesting to people. That will help you network strategically, connect with the right people. That will open doors for future jobs. And those future jobs and those relationships that you strategically try to build, those are the ones that will lead you to a higher pay. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be as simple as just, you know, publish two articles, you know, see that the recruiter landed on your LinkedIn profile and say, hey, hey, hey you see my profile, right? I, I, I want 20% more. It's, it's more than that, right? You need to build a brand and that takes time. So for this particular sprint, focus on the basics of job hunting and personal branding. And, but think of it long term, right? And think of the value you will be able to build and bring through your network, through your content. Um, and that's where the next jump will come into play. 
Mm, awesome, awesome. And where is the um, the um, border between becoming a thought leader? Some people really want to go all in, and they start producing a lot of content. They start, you know, uh, recording podcasts and whatnot. And that's probably a bit too con- too time consuming. So, mm-hmm. um, so what what is kind of just enough to build a good personal brand? Imagine a CTO who is very busy, has lots of uh, stuff to do, has two kids at home and would like to still have a good brand within a year from yeah. now. So so what what is the minimum set of activities that will yield some reasonable um, result at the end? Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, well, uh, to those who are the majority who don't have the ambition of that, I congratulate you. As I said earlier, you can do a great deal with your personal brand without having to become an influencer. We have enough there. Um, no, what you uh, if you follow the right steps, right? The, the either following the methodology I put forward or any other alternative, I always recommend to you dedicate it. You dedicate um, two to three uh, weekends in a row, somewhere between four or five hours to set up the basics, right? Define your brand, define your brand strategy, go about, you know, learn the, you know, put some effort into it, define your target groups, find your topics, you know, and, 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 you know, search for some sources and, you know, do some of the groundwork. And once you have that, at least the way I approach it and I recommend it, it's approximately anywhere between 10 and not more than 15 or 20 minutes a day, every day. That's it. That's all. Yeah. Right. And if you think about it, it's not much more than the time it takes you, even if you're fast, to look good for your physical personal brand <laughs> and to just simply shower and dress and shave or whatever it is you do. It's going to take you, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. What I recommend is no more. The impact yeah. is bigger. Mm. Interesting. Interesting how you compare it with the uh, physical presence because that's what people are used to. And I guess we also need to get used to the online presence, online activity, and just to take care of the of the brand online. Absolutely. People underestimate. I mean, everybody knows the sentence. You know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression, right? Lovely sentence. And so very true. So mm-hmm. very true. The fact is that today, usually, in more cases than not, your first impression will be your LinkedIn profile or your digital footprint in whatever shape or form. It's as simple as that. You know, what let, let's let's be honest. How did, I don't know how you found me, but you and I have you seen my LinkedIn profile before talking to me? Well, of course. And I found you on LinkedIn, of course. <laughs> guess, guess, guess what? I've seen yours before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right? and it's it's unless you bump into someone and or whatever. Usually today, the first thing is like, oh, you gotta meet so and so. It's like how do you spell his name or her name. Or, that's the first thing you ask. So that first impression that you take care of when you dress up, right? You and you practice that strong handshake, and which is important, right? We know. Well, that will happen online. Mm. So yes. whatever effort you want to put into giving a good first impression. You know, you should dedicate 80% of that to your online impression. Mm, awesome, awesome. And then there are some people who have really strong personal brand. You know, they work in some of those biggest companies and they really are perceived as high level uh, CTOs or CIOs or chief data officers. But skill-wise, they could be on a similar level as uh, someone who, you know, is just working across the street. Um, but you know, they are perceived as a different next level. So like, what are the things in the long run, let's say looking two, three years ahead, five years, 10 years ahead, like what are the activities that eventually get someone to be perceived three times or five times uh, next level? So mm-hmm. And it's it's the topics. Um, you, you can, well, uh, when you say three times, five times, the, uh, it, it, you can wear clothes that are slightly bigger than yours, right? But if they are really too big, it's going to look funny on you, right? So mm-hmm. you you got you to gotta grow into things. It's not, you know, it's, it's not, a, I said, it's really, it's a marathon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
I, you know, personal branding is for for farmers. It's it's not for hunters. Right? You gotta you gotta invest time and grow it, right? Um, and and start start growing into. But it's about the topics you start defining. It's about the people that you network with. It's about the you know the, the channels that you occupy, um, and it's about the you know the ambition that you put forward. You simply you know have the most the most important actual one is the network. Um, a lot of people think that when it comes to personal branding, it might be about the content you put out there, and it's important to be visible and add value and you know and bring credibility into your profile. So yes, you have to, and it's important. Um, but the most important value you get is through through the network, through the people you connect with, um, and that in, in investing in those relationships and contributing value to them regularly. Uh, let's say that I would want to become um, tomorrow uh, the uh, the chief marketing officer, or excuse me, the chief tech officer, CTO. You know, I'm a level underneath, or I'm, or or maybe I'm the CTO of a of a, of a large company, but I want to go like really big league, or what? The, the the question is very simple: Who will be the decision makers? that will make that aspiration and ambition happen. And those are the ones you simply need to network with. Right? So I am the CTO of a small bank or of a small IT company, and I want to be the CTO of, of you know, country CTO of IBM or of, uh, or of a large company, whatever it is, or a large bank. or Who will decide upon that? The current CTO, the people around him or her, the C level of that company. And that's how you define your target group. And that's how you define who you want to network with. What are the topics that these people are interested in? That gives you what it is that if you want to say or comment or write about, you should. Hmm. What, what, what moves them? Where are they present? Where do these animals go to drink? Is the question every hunter, again, said farmers and hunters, but this applies. Where do they go? And that's where you got to go to. So if there are particular conferences or if they go to particular networking events, those are the ones you want to go to. If they listen to particular podcasts or, or, or read particular publications, those are the ones you want to read. And if you talk about particular topics, those are the ones you want to be an expert in. That will be the first proof, because if you have no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> it's, it's, then you're not ready, right? But if, if not, if you see that you can grow into it, then you'll have the right topics, reach the right people, and the people will be the ones that will give you the next job. Pretty much 60% of all jobs are found through networking. Um, so if you invest in connecting with the right people uh, strategically, <laughs> then you you just have uh, increased your chances of landing a new job. Actually, it's a factor two to one to applying for jobs. So mm. people should invest twice as much time in connecting to the right people um, than they spend on applying for jobs online. Well, well did you say 60% of jobs are found through networks? Yes, that is correct. Actually, um, job job hunting through job posts is usually the last resource any company uses, mm. uh, and usually twenty five to thirty percent of all jobs are covered that way. Everything else happens before. You know, mm. companies first look inside. Can I hire someone inside? Is there someone? Else? Yes, no, right? Ah, okay. Second step: Do we know someone who could do this job? Right. And pretty much by that time, two thirds of all jobs have been filled. But whatever then happens is okay. Well, there we go. Let's hire a headhunter. Let's you know, or let's put it out on an ad, or hire a headhunter and they put it out on an ad. That's that's when you hit the public market. <laughs> but you know, two thirds are in the hidden market, yeah. and that's people. That's people. You know. So it's it's good to be uh, on top of people's mind, just to be, um, you know. When when a new position opens, they can reach out to you. That's, that's Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Exactly. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, this is so, so strategic. Uh, now when you were describing the process of 
connecting with people who will be deciding on who uh, will be hired eventually. I mean, that's, that's just so strategic and uh, so many people underestimate this process. Mm -hmm. uh, so thanks for clarifying. And it, also, it's the business of you. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned one interesting thing, which is the, the topic, which uh, needs to change as well, because most of the CTOs from smaller companies, they talk about architecture, the technologies, programming languages, testing frameworks, how they migrated from on-premise to the cloud, you know, very technical topics, great topics though, but um, not those topics that the chief marketing officer or chief sales officer or chief executive officer would necessarily be interested in. Um, but also they may not really know how to go from where they are to those advanced topics. Could we label them as advanced? Um, probably not too advanced, but different. No, it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's just different. It's just different. Um, so, so how, 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 to, how to even think about these topics? Like, what, what do you do with your members and with, with people who you coach? Like, how do they go from kind of thinking about the topics and having some network and going for lunch uh, with uh, their colleagues, their uh, teammates, to now inviting for lunch someone completely different, talking about different topics and uh, yeah. this? Yes. Um, Actually, there there are two different um, there are two different aspects that uh, or two different levels you can think about. Um, people thinking of improving or establishing their personal brand on a general level, and those with doing so with a particular long term ambition, right? Um, and I I experience and I have experienced both, and and uh, and uh, it's and, and that is the key the key first question that I try to figure out. What is it that you're trying to do? Okay? If you're trying to land a job, right, then there is a particular tactic to apply, right, that I refer to as the sniper strategy, but it is different than if you're trying to build your brand long term to be, you know, to elevate your your positioning. And then the key question is, and you start understanding that when you realize the topics that they want to, usually the people that have that ambition and that long-term view, they are actually naturally inclined and interested in these topics of leadership. They're already trying to, you know, to, and it's, it's their ambition, it's their drive. So it's not completely new. If, and that's what I said earlier. If you're not really interested in talking about people and development of and strategic topics around IT, well, and don't become a CTO because that's going to be most of your job, right? If what you like is to really get into, you know, one level, it really, it's, and it's super important and it can be very strategic. I'm not playing it down by any means. Please not, right? Not everybody needs to become a CTO. This is a very much a question of ambition. And if you have that ambition, then you will have that internal drive and you will, you will want to learn things and know things and develop. So if you come with that, to me, then it's very simple because I'm just going to ask the, the right questions <laughs> because I've been doing this for so long and you will have the answers. You will know the topics, right? You will. It, it's, it's quite natural and it happens and it's not, it's not rocket science. It's, it's strategic, very strategic. And it's, you know, at least the way I do it, it follows a framework, but it's, it's, um, it's very simple. It's conversional. It's all in you. It's just, uh, I, you know, the only thing I do is I ask the right question and help you answer it uh, and navigate it. Because not everybody is a marketing strategist or a branding strategist. That's normal, right? And that's, you know, that's where, that's where the help comes helpful. <laughs> so true, so true. Um, so you also mentioned uh, that the uh, process of job hunting is uh, a bit broken, if not completely. So um, what can a CTO who is not looking for a job right now, but knows that something may be going on in a year or so because the company may be acquired or, you know, may run out of money, funding or whatever. So, you know, how to even think about looking for a job in six months from now? Should they start reaching out to people? Should they start going to job boards? Should they connect with executive search uh, companies? What, what to do? Yes. Well, um, as a general note, as a general note, I recommend everyone to be always, with all due respect, a little bit on the alert. 
the, the, the concept of job security that we might feel exists doesn't. Rare exceptions. And everybody knows those exceptions. And those might probably not be asking themselves the question that you pointed in the first place. So they, they might not even be looking to these podcasts. <laughs> Everyone else, right? They know it's there. Whether it's three months or three years, that is not the question. But if it's there, the sooner you start preparing. In other words, if you think of your personal brand as farming, what I'm simply saying is that you don't know when, but at some point in time, you know, it's not going to be tomatoes in your fridge. I don't know how long it's going to take you to grow tomatoes, right? And all sorts of vegetables. But the earlier you start, the bigger and better you'll be able to, to take care of yourself. That's what you're growing, right? And that's it. If you do it in a hurry, you will be able to reap benefits of it right away. Right. After, after the first couple of weekends, after a couple of hours of investing into it, you'll start seeing benefit. Mm -hmm. But if you do it longer term, right? this is not a 30-day 30, 30 diet. Right? If you do it long term, then the benefits will be, will be magnificent or much, much bigger. And, and that's, that's what you determine. What is your, your, your time horizon? Uh, sorry, that shouldn't be the time horizon, but you should simply start now. And assume that the more you invest into your brand, again, once you've done the initial work, um, really more than 10, 20 minutes a day, uh, then you'll be able to keep to keep in shape for forever. And and maybe you don't need it until 18 months later. But 18 months later, when you need it, you're gonna be in such better shape. <laughs> if you need it six months later, you'll be in better shape already. Mm. And, and then in those 12 months or 16 or 18 months, uh, should the CTO start reaching out to the network? Constantly, yes, of course. The, the, when, I'm, when I refer to personal branding, I'm not referring, I'm referring to the entire strategic program that I recommend to go through. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, once you've done the initial setting, you've defined your target group, you've defined your channels, you've defined your content, your style, your, then you start activating it. It means you're constantly reaching out to people and connecting to people. You are regularly, with the frequency you've defined, putting out content. You are you are con you're constantly here. you're constantly investing those 20, 20 minutes, and that is not only on content. A lot of it is on building and strengthening relationships. Hmm. You know, you you and I are now connected on LinkedIn. You will hear from me at least once a year from now on. Remember my words. You will never not hear from me again. You will always. That's part of that work that I pray to you do. And I say, yeah, of course, networking to people. It's all of it. And not only LinkedIn. This is online. This is offline. This is your entire brand. It's your program. You have your strategy and you execute. Right? And then when the CTO is looking for a job, let's say, you know, 12 months passed, something happened, uh, the, the person is on the job uh, hunt, should he or she start reaching out to people and say like, hey, I'm ready to embark on a new role? Does it not sound a bit too desperate? Like what approach would you recommend? Um, meet, meet with people if you can, right? Use, use the channels, but meet with people, speak with people. You can convey a completely different degree of empathy and have a completely different reading on how the person reacts, how he or she might be able to help, um, how to tone the conversation. If you can, meet in person for coffee. Select who you want to talk to strategically. Start with those that you think might be the closest to opening a door to a company that you might find interesting. If you assume that only one third of all jobs are ever made public, you can assume, right, and you, 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 and you count the frequency with which jobs are changed. You can assume that a lot of these people might be knowing of a job. They just don't even know that you are looking for one, right? Mm -hmm. So you might just, um, and, uh, and, it's, and it's not a bad thing to ask for help. Now, to the question, the degree and the sense of urgency that one might experience and or sense, that's very individual. Right? And that's what will determine the intensity and the directness with which you might be doing this or not. 
But if you constantly are investing in your brand, ideally, actually, opportunities should be coming your way. And, and then you don't need to, right? I, yeah, and then they come your way. So true. so true. Well, that usually happens even to people in IT who have very little personal brand just because of the uh, talent shortage. But the, usually this uh, fades out as uh, the software engineer becomes a team lead, tech lead, and a CTO. So those opportunities start um, evaporating. Mm -hmm. the, the, the shortage of skills, as you yeah. said, is on a technical level. But um, the skills that are required later for the job are different. I, I, I don't know enough about technology, so people I would work with would put me, tell me anything and I wouldn't understand. So you do need some basic understanding, but it's mostly about orchestrating people, in, you know, uh, inspiring them, managing them, challenging them, and being, uh, understanding the impact of cost and the contribution of it to the, to the, it's a totally different conversation that you have. And there is no shortage of people that, that have that. I have the skills for that, not technically speaking, right? So I wouldn't be qualified CTO, but from my background, I have the experience and the knowledge and seniority to do so. So a lot of people that come from consulting that might have never really had the depth of it are very suited and eventually end up taking these jobs. And the people that are growing from inside might not because these people grew up focusing on the skills that eventually end up being the ones that are determining for what you need there and, and are better sales people usually right because that you know as a C, you know as a CTO you need to also sell believe it or not <laughs> selling becomes part of your job a lot of IT people don't like selling or don't think that you know right? so yeah it's a it's transformational there <laughs> mm. um, and on, on this note, actually, you brought something very interesting up. So um, as uh, people um, level up the career ladder, they also start focusing rather on the soft skills. You know, so hard skills are usually very important for individual contributors and tech leads. And then the soft skills for C-levels. But what, what soft skills? So based on your experience, what should someone start with in order to get a really good job as a C-level in the technology space? Uh -huh. um, well, uh, you do need, and this is important, to have a certain interest in people. And it needs to be genuine. So it's quite simple. Um, you cannot lead people if the people that you lead don't sense that you give a shit about them. Not, uh, not of a certain level. So do you have a certain interest in people? Um, well, then that's, that's the first place to start. Uh, now, you will probably have already developed if the step you're thinking is CT or, or C level, you know, to that degree of, you know, strategic, or you probably already have experience in leading teams, right? Um, you know, it's, and it's most likely, you know, even larger teams or whatever. Um, but you might have not had the experience in, you know, in the, the, the I say, the, the sol solving or addressing uh, um, political or, or, or other issues or problems that people have, but, but more, more of technical questions. The, on, a, on a lower level, you ask your, you know, the, you, the lower you go, the higher you go. If you wish, the, the more, the less technical, specific the questions is like, which which button should I press, right? And the more is like, you know, wow, what should we do with our division of X, Y, Z? So the, the depth of that, those conversations are, are very different. Um, but you probably have uh, had experience, but if you don't have an interest in people, uh, don't do not do that, don't, don't go there. Um, if you're if you're passionate by the technology and then then stay you know if you if that's really what drives you and exploring and playing and then you know then stick to that mm -hmm. if uh, uh, do that in a bigger or better place or ask more money for it but you know <laughs> if you don't have a genuine interest in people then don't don't become uh, a people leader 
Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, great advice. And I guess I could uh, listen to you for the next uh, one or two hours, but you don't have that much time. <laughs> but you also mentioned some course um, uh, in the middle. So uh, where can people um, find more about you and the course? Like, what is the course about? How can it help um, people in the technology space? Oh, well, sure. Um, well, first, you can find me on LinkedIn, Herman Ramirez, and connect with me. And uh, you can go to Herman-Ramirez.com and you will find their uh, courses. Um, for whatever reason, I decided to, them, to do them in German, in English, and in Spanish. <laughs> because I, I happen to speak those languages and I, I passionately believe that everybody should invest in their personal brand. And uh, yeah, there is a personal branding course and there is a special sub-course called Job Hunting. Uh, where I go into the sniper strategy and how to put that into practice. And it's, you know, it's basically the step-by-step -step strategic process um, of, uh, of, you know, building your brand, bringing it to life, you know, how to, you know, how to improve your profile, how to connect with the right people, how to, you know, how to deal with invitation, all, all the little tricky details of that process. But the most important aspect is you need to be, you know, if you're willing to invest for a couple of days, uh, you know, four, six hours uh, in a row, and then 10, 20 minutes a day. Then you're gonna be, you're gonna be in a good, uh, in a good space. Uh, that's the most important one. <laughs> awesome, awesome, cool. So I'll include uh, the links in the show notes and on the YouTube in the description. So, so thanks a lot. Is is there anything else you would like to mention just before we kind of wrap it up? Some last final advice uh, because you are so passionate about personal <laughs> brand, and I'm not sure I was able to ask the right questions. So is there anything? Oh, yeah. Your questions were awesome, actually. The <laughs> questions were, and it was was pretty. Um, it's, it's obviously you know a great deal about the topic because you actually you know got it through the thinking process that people are asking themselves, starting to with um, and, and if anything, rather than adding anything on top, maybe maybe to summarize it as you started. People need to become aware that they are a brand already, right? So it's 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 embracing that and actually making something out of it consciously and strategically. Uh, you know, defining what makes them special, and then if you you don't have to be you know outspoken and go out there, but if you are interested in passionate about topics, um, write about them. You know, connect with the right people. Go about it strategically. Invest in yourself. It will pay out. It will pay out. Your brand is your number one asset for your career, whether you know it or not, or whether you deal with it cor correctly or not. It is. It is. Huh? Awesome. Awesome. Well, these are so valuable um, in, insights. So thanks a lot for sharing with, uh, with the audience. Thank you so much for having me. Really, thank you. So it's been so such a fun conversation. I hope <laughs> your viewers, listeners could take a couple of hints and pointers. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, keep, keep doing the, the great job you're doing. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. See you soon again. Thank you. Thank you so much. You too. Bye.